you know, what we're doing here in this special address is, give, is just giving you a glimpse of all the great work that you have done with us. You know, it's really about the work that we're that you are doing, that we're ideally helping you enable. This is really about um, working with companies, working with government agencies to help the U.S. lead in AI, to help democratize AI. We can't stop trying to find ways to improve our planet and humanity. Performance is going to continue to need to go up. I'm just here to tell you that we're designing our systems with not just performance in mind, but with energy efficiency in mind. It's going, it's going to mean that we're going to need data centers that understand this accelerated computing infrastructure. Um, it's going to mean that we understand and approach things not just from a chip level, but from a full stack level. Because we don't just try to optimize the chip. We're no longer just optimizing the GPU. We're optimizing the system. We look at a full, full stack approach of how the system operates, the environment in which that system operates, and the software stack that runs in the system. And with that in mind, that's how we spent years developing our Blackwell platform. The amount of technology in here is just, it's, it's a marvel of engineering. Um, all of these, all of these components, um, you know, we, we purposely build these racks of computing trays. We, we, we make sure that those racks of computing trays work together. And on top of that platform, I mentioned full stack platform, you know, this is, this is not the platform. This is the AI super cluster platform. The real platform adds the CUDA X libraries, our software acceleration libraries. And then to further advance work in AI, um, in physical AI, we add our two main platforms, NVIDIA AI Enterprise with our microservices, our large language models, and Omniverse, our digital twin, you know, where we use the virtual world to improve the physical world. We've achieved a 100,000x reduction in energy over the last 10 years, 100,000x. And that's on the inferencing side. So the generation of tokens is on the in uh, industry side. On the training side, I think we've reduced energy consumption by 2,000x. The Blackwell is coming. It's in production. And some of our biggest and best systems are, uh, uh, will be shipping here in this next quarter. We're moving from instruction-led computing to intention-led computing. And that software has to be new. Um, we have to be able to, to talk to our computers, to ask questions. Um, this is, this is going to be the second part of what's going to drive this industrial revolution, probably one of the most important parts. Um, we've got years of skills here, and the amount of energy. We have more software people at NVIDIA working here um, than we do hardware people for this reason. Um, the, instead of a computer being a tool that you use to get stuff done, the computer is now going to be able to generate intelligence, generate skills. So let's take an example of a manufacturing floor. You might have an inventory AI agent that's constantly monitoring to your, your inventory. It notices that you got excess capacity, but your floor is not taking advantage of that excess capacity. They're working on a plan to produce X number of widgets today. That AI agent can communicate with the factory floor agent. That factory, factory floor agent can help accelerate the continued building versus sending people home early or whatever, continue to build, which then communicates with the purchasing AI agent to re be replenishing the materials at a rate, and you can do in minutes what used to take days. So this, this era of agentic AI is really going to transform a lot of different industries. We've already seen examples of some horizontal use cases uh, where digital avatars 
are used um, to improve the way we talk to customers, to improve the way we uh, enable our employees um, to, to be more productive. We've seen some great examples in the past um, on uh, content generation, whether it be um, text, images, videos now. A um, lot of great work in product R&D, not just in healthcare with what we show there, but uh, the three that you see there are three, uh, three things that I want to talk about in a, in a minute. And we can use that, use that AI agent, since it is proactive, since it's not waiting for you to prompt it to see if you have an issue, we can use that AI agent to let you know you have an issue, that you have a vulnerability. We want to enable you all to incorporate your data because, you know, you're, you're not going to optimize your supply chain on ChatGPT alone. You're probably going to take a smaller model. You're going to fine-tune it. You're going to fine-tune it maybe in your particular industry. And you're going to fine-tune it for your particular corporation because you have different semantics, different lingo, right? Training the AI make sure that you expose it to the way that your company or your organization is able to interpret it. That reduces hallucinations, right? That, that makes it tailored. But you still don't stop there. You don't look back and train it. You've got to continually expose it to new data, new intelligence. That data is intelligence, and companies, people, people are intelligence. So really happy to announce our NIM agent blueprints. Um, it's a way to connect your data flywheel, your data flywheel, to a bunch of different reference workflows. We're not an application company. We provide reference examples based on some of the most um, often asked workflows that our customers that you bring to us, some of the biggest pain points, and some of the ones we care about the most. Improving customer satisfaction, employee satisfaction, getting smarter, better, safer products to market, helping companies cure some really, really horrible diseases, and protecting our government IP, our personal IP, and having a strong AI ecosystem to lead the world. He looks real. He's not real. But James, a blueprint that's available on build.nvidia.com is going to tell us a little bit more about all the blueprints that we have. Hello, I'm James of Digital Human. Feel free to ask me anything about NVIDIA and its products. Hi, James. Tell me about NVIDIA NIM Agent Blueprint. NVIDIA NIM Agent Blueprints provide customizable templates for deploying AI models in production, simplifying the process for developers and enterprises. How is NVIDIA AI improving cybersecurity? NVIDIA AI is enhancing cybersecurity by accelerating threat detection, improving incident response, and enabling real-time threat analysis. When you transmit data, it's encrypted. Mostly safe. Mostly safe. But... <laughs> LLMs are plain text. You're going to train an LLM or a small language model, an SLM, it's plain text. Everything you said is in plain text. That knowledge is in plain text. NVIDIA is the only provider to implement confidential computing to protect those LLMs. And that's the only way protecting your crown jewel um, to deliver secure and trustworthy AI. Um, people could try to attack uh, the encryption codes on where data is moving, but I think we all can imagine it's much easier to read a Word file than it is a, you know, an encrypted file. You know, primarily to date, we've really affected the IT industry. We've affected the electron part of this. And the next step is to affect the proton part of this, the physical world. We know that robots can help save lives, help do jobs, 
to make it safer for manufacturing employees to work. Um, they can be they can be assistive to people with disabilities. Um, we know um, multiple organizations are are um, talking about the need that we'll have a four million dollar uh, four million jobs created in the next several years. We're not sure where that workforce could come from. Some of it might come from the jobs that are, are too dangerous with robots. Some of it, and I hope a lot of it comes from our ability to upscale our current workforce. What if we could train a robot on the manufacturing process in the virtual world? Train them in the virtual world. Train it at scale. Don't train one one autonomous machine, one car, one robot, one at a time in the physical world. Train millions of them. Train millions of them virtually using that magentic AI knowledge that they need to have to reason and learn. Train them in the second computer to simulate how they operate, throwing at them a multitude of conditions, bad and good, and when we have success, we take that neural net and we put it in a third computer. We put it in the car. We put it in the submersible. We put it in the drone. We put it in the, human eye, the humanoid. So Omniverse is our way um, really to test and optimize uh, people's design and all the operational processes that go to producing this these physical AIs. It's a virtual tree and gown. Real world radio networks, 5G, 6G. Um, we're now using NVIDIA Aerial RAN um, to improve both the transmission, the location of towers, and the utilization of how these networks um, exist. We're announcing that SETI is releasing their first real time search for fast radio bursts. You're probably saying, what are fast radio bursts? SETI's mission is dedicated for searching for life in the universe. You know, they use our Holoscan Edge platform, that third computer. They use that third computer to listen to signals from deep space. Fast radio bursts are one of those kinds of signals. But they happen so fast. They happen in fractions of a millisecond, fractions of a second. So the only way they, they know they happen is they go back to the stored telescope array data. They see it happen, but it's long gone. It's long gone. We have no idea really where it came from. And so the ability to spot these things in real time is really accelerating our ability to find the source, identify the source, analyze these frequencies, you can assume what these frequencies might be. But the amazing thing about them is not that there are radio frequencies coming from distant galaxies, that the energy coming from these distant galaxies are brighter than some of the galaxies in our universe. A fast radio burst of milliseconds is producing energy that's greater than the energy produced by some of our galaxies. So, really excited about that as a space guy. I'm excited about that. You might be saying, so what? But it's a massive application um, to help us understand not just about our planet, but what might be out there. What might be out there as we go beyond Mars. 